Eleanor Pannoni, go by Skimpy. I think I know just about everybody here, but anyways, today we're gonna be making chatterbaits. Um, I wanna give a big shout out to Dual Molds and Victory Hooks and CS Coatings. They supplied me most of the materials for us to be able to go ahead and do this. So, anyways, um, I've been fishing chatterbaits for a long time, and uh, I've been making chatterbaits for a long time. But the problem with uh, making chatterbaits is there's not an actual designated mold for chatterbaits right now. So I used other molds to make my own chatterbaits and then to attach the blade I would use split rings. Well it just didn't give me the, the, the action that I liked and uh, so you know, I found this idea where uh, we can put a wire form in the mold with the hook so the wire form is open and then you can put the blade on there. Uh, another way I tried to do it was uh, actually open the hook eye with a punch and I would I'd put it like on my uh, on my vice or uh, vice whatever and then uh, I would put my uh, punch and then I would smack it with a hammer and it would open up the eye well the problem with that is is uh, a lot of the times the, the eye would just break out so you were doing for every one good one you had like five bad ones so and that's why I found the, uh, to use these wire forms and uh, I know you guys are sitting down. We'll, we'll do it here in a second. But basically what you do is you just put the wire form in the mold. And then you put the hook on there. I don't know if you can see that. So then you have it open. So, the, so you can just put the blade on. So right now we have the molds sitting on the pot right now. And they're going to get hot. You want the molds nice and hot before, um, before you start pouring. Another thing we do is, is I do what we call smoke mold. Actually, this one's already smoked. Uh, if you notice, it's all black in there, all the soot. What that, the reason I do that is it helps lead enter the, uh, the mold and it also helps you release the mold, or release the bait from the mold. So let's see if this one's smoked. This one's kind of smoked, but we'll do it again. So what I'm doing is I'm just going underneath it. You just want to get it nice and black. And like I said, it, it just helps fill the cavity and also helps release the, uh, the jig when you're finished. This one too. And uh, the molds we're going to be using today are the poison tail, or it's actually the poison swing tail. And uh, the reason I use this one instead of the, uh, the regular poison tail is because this one is actually weak, uh, this one is not weakless. So you don't have to worry about a hole being in the bait when you, um, sorry, I was trying to multitask. You don't have to worry about the hole being in the bait. For example, we're gonna use an Archie head jig too, because this one's more like the, um, the Z-Man chatterbait, but this one is actually weedless, so there is an area where you would put your weed guard in, and then there would be put a hole inside of the, the jig so you can put your um, your weed guard in there. So we don't want a hole in our bait, so we're not going to put a, a, a pin in there, but we also don't want it to fill full of lead, or else you're going to have a long thing on it. So what I do is I have these Teflon pins. And we put the Teflon pin right up to the bait, so it's not going to make a hole in the bait, but it's just going to line up, and then you're going to close the mold, and then you're going to pour. So I think I went over about everything, so who wants to go first? Cody. Uh, <laughs> so, um, like I said, I got two different styles. I have the Arky head look. Archie head jig, and this one is the poison tail jig. Um, is there a specific one you want to try first? No, that's not it. Okay. You know. So, what we're going to do is this is the wire form, and this is the hook. Like I was saying, is you put the uh, wire form like that. You gotta watch out because the molds are hot. So 
you have you have the wire form in and then the hook. So then you want to sometimes you want it as close as possible sometimes there is a little bit of a gap because you are putting the hooks and stuff in there that weren't designed for the mold and then what we do is we clean it up afterwards so basically you got to remember which uh which mold you throw or what your cap you did So, that's all done. So what I did is I just cut the sprue off. And I, if there's any lead or anything inside of the, the wire form, you just want to kind of go like this, get it out, and then I kind of bend it out a little bit. And then you see how there's a gap, you can do it. Okay. All right, you ready to do yours? No. No? Here, I'll show you guys. I want to pass them around. So, Della, is the wire form, is it normally for the back end of the poison tail? No, the wire form is actually for the um, the herring head underspin. So that's so what you would put. For a, it's designed for a spinner yeah. blade? Yeah. <laughs> Negative. Well, yes, it's for the bottom. So you would put it uh, in the mold, you would put it on the bottom of the thing, and then that hook is open. You'd put a, a bearing swivel and a, and a blade on the bottom. Yep. yep. So you have, oh, and your average uh, chatterbait, three eighths and a half. So it's kind of up to you. I personally like a half. If you're going to fish it a lot shallower, three eighths. So half. Yeah, go ahead and you have this one right here is half. And then remember it's one, two, three from the end. So I'm set up this one right here. Sure. It's up half. Here. Backwards. I'm trying to move Washington. This is so large. So this goes on top for the fish. Yeah, correct. That's where the fish are. That's where I cut the fish is for all the It's hot, yeah, low hot stuff, it's got a line inside, like the steep side, and all the fish are caught in there. Yeah, all the way on that. Where is this? So, this right here is like the bio, the bio hook eyes. Being as you like that. Sit on the outside of those, whatever it is, there's something to drop down inside. Yep. Just like that. So, squeeze it slow. Yep, you're perfect. Sometimes you're not waiting on. Oh, I squeeze it kind of tight. And and one, two, three. So you pour in there. Slow, steady. Slow, steady pour. So you just kind of go. Because I was slow, steady. I do it out of the dot. I do it out of the dot. And it's out to the corner like this. And then this thing is going to come with it. You're only going to use a little bit, but I fill the whole thing. You just pour it right back in. Mess up, it's all good. Slow and steady. Go. So let's open it up. Yeah, let's open it up and see if you did it. So, what I do is I look all the way around because okay, that's perfect. But uh, sometimes, if you don't fill it up all the way, you'll get little gaps and stuff there. But that's perfect. That's perfect. You want to turn this piece off? Yeah. So what I do is you just go straight across. Straight across. So right here, right? Correct. Okay. And then the next step is here. I'll do it on mine. Who has mine? Gotta watch him. So if you 
look at here, obviously it's not smooth, right? Yep. So you take this file, and you barely just hit it. You don't want to put a lot of pressure because you don't want to put, you know, huge marks and scrapes on it. But you just want to smooth it out. Just like that. And then when we powder cut it, it's gonna come out or smooth. Pretty much what you need is you need some uh, forceps or whatever because I hold it like this because we're gonna get it hot. You don't want to put it hot on your hand. And then you need powder coat. This is the CS coatings. We've got a couple couple different colors that should match all of them. And basically what you want to do is you want to get the lead hot enough where the paint is gonna stick on it. You don't need it super hot or else it's gonna kind of bubble on there. So what I do is I usually go for about 10 turns about what it is what I do. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, heat gun. And like I said, I got the forceps, whatever you call them, pliers on there. And I just go like this until you feel like it's hot enough. If it's not hot enough, the paint's not gonna stick on there. And if it's too hot, it's gonna kind of bubble. And what you wanna do is you wanna dip it in and out and then shake it off. And if you notice how it's a little bit dull, matte look, that means it wasn't, it could have been a little bit hotter, but that's still gonna work perfect. So, I kinda of return it to the heat a little bit, make sure you got everything, and that's it. You want it uh, as light coating as possible. Uh, if you have too much on there, what's gonna happen is when we put them in the oven to bake, it's gonna start dripping and stuff off. So if you look at it, you want to get it hot, dip it in, dip it out as fast as you can. You don't want to dip it in, leave it. You just want to dip it in and dip it out. Bang on the side and get all that excess off, and that's it. And then uh, what's going to happen is, is once you put it in the oven, it's going to bake. And the reason why we bake it is because it's going to kind of like cure it. So it's going to eliminate most of the chips and stuff. Yes, if you start slamming against rocks and stuff all the time, it will start chipping. But for the most part, uh, it, it protects it and keeps it from chipping. All right. Okay, so now it's time to put the eyes on here. And uh, so instead of just gluing them on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on there. There's actually adhesive on the eyes and then I'm gonna put the eyes on here and then I'm gonna dip it in this seal coat. And that way it seals the entire thing and the eyes stay on there. So I don't wanna get any on this table, so I'm just gonna keep it on this plate. It's pretty easy. I got a couple different eyes here. This one's already open, so I'm just gonna use this. And like I said, you just stick it on there. There's little indents for the eyes. Ooh. So then if you look, the eyes are on there, you know, they're already uh, stuck on there, but they're not gonna stay on there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of dip it in. And I'm just going to let it drip. And what that's going to do is it's going to seal it. So then it, it takes, you know, five minutes or whatever for it to dry. So you got to kind of play with it. And then after that, we'll put the blade on. Yeah, you keep it in there. I'll just buy shit that's airbrushed. It's going to work. You should take a picture and send it that way. I think I did see that one.
right, so this is it. Put the blades on. Everything's all hooked up. So we're all done here. Hopefully everybody had a good time. Thank you, Dual Molds. Thank you, Victory Hooks. Thank you, CS Coatings, for hooking us up. Appreciate you. All right, guys.